everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and I realize I haven't done an update in a little while um, since the October plays. Um, as far as everything goes, I am full fledged into moving right now. Everything I own is in boxes behind the screen, and I just wanted to kind of give a couple of updates. Um, I am moving into a place, it's about 10 minutes down the road, away from my beautiful giant two bedroom apartment into a smaller two bedroom apartment with a roommate. But I foresee having at least uh, my computer set up able to do video vlogs. So I am excited and a little apprehensive to see how much space I have for filming. I would really like to get down into more reviews with footage of me playing the game or manipulating the pieces. But if it has to be vlogs, I will figure it out like we always do. We just grow and adapt. If there is literally no space, then I'm going to be looking into a shared workspace here in Seattle and see if that works. <laughs> um, so I just finished up a stream about the holidays and gaming and kind of like listening to people talk about Christmas and New Year's and that kind of thing. I am not a super religious person. I am actually atheist. But I, I every year you get you know, the days off work and everything. So you tend to have holiday traditions anyway. So I don't feel like super hip hypocritical talking about holiday traditions because I do have some. Because every year you're going to have those days off anyway. So we watch movies and we play games. Um, this year, because I'm moving and I have kind of a different social situation happening, I will be probably spending my time between um, two friend groups that invited me out. I think everyone's kind of like, Hey Margaret, you're not going to be alone for the holidays, are you? So I've gotten some invites to do stuff, and I'm trying to take the least pathetic route I can. Because, <laughs> yes, I realize, like, my life has changed a lot in the last six months, so everyone really wants to make sure that I'm not alone by myself for the holiday, but, you know, those things happen sometime. I was alone during Thanksgiving, and it all worked out for the best overall, but... Um, so I'll be going and seeing a movie. I was thinking it was going to be Rogue One during the holiday, but it looks like it's going to be Assassin's Creed. Luckily, I'm seeing Rogue One this week anyway. And then I will be hanging out and playing games and watching movies at another friend's house. And for the New Year holiday, the New Year evening, I'm going to meet some new friends. Um, invited by people I kind of just tangentially know from other people. And for the New Year's Day, I will be having brunch and playing games with some friends I knew from a couple years back. So it's all kind of different this year. I'm not hosting. And I, I miss hosting, so uh, that is certainly something I will be bringing back around as soon as I can to, like, host in my space and, like, make dinner and put on a spread and do the whole thing because it's something I enjoy a lot and I, I miss quite a lot. Um, so after the move, I have a list a mile long of games to replay, either that I played once, or play for the first time, or play test, or do a review of. So I have like a review copy of the Oracle of Delphi. I need to get a few more plays in just so I can kind of cement in my mind what I think the game is and how it works and what's good about it. Um, but I realized I hadn't done a vlog about um, BGGCon. I have filmed two, and unfortunately, the acoustics of my room in here have made it where my microphone is picking up a weird sound. So, um, as far as I know, this position is working and is going to be fine. Uh, so, BGGCon was fun. Um, I had some unfortunate incidents with people being maybe a little too familiar with me. They had followed me online but never really talked or interacted and they felt it very necessary to, in one instance, complain about some of the things that I talk about, i.e. like inclusivity and diversity and how that, that wasn't necessary and I was taking the fun out of their hobby. Another one wanted to comment on my breakup in a way that was not cool. It was short. It was not a long like drawn out conversation but it definitely like hit me that every time I was alone and traveling I was getting these things told to me or at me or said at me and it really wore me down and I had one guy kind of look like he was gonna put his hands on me and I like ran into the nearest bathroom and so that was kind of the bittersweet part the beautiful part of BGG is 
friends and family and my beautiful, wonderful humans and the live version of Games on the Rocks, the Periscope. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was so much fun. All four of us in the same friggin' place talking games. Our friends all came in and kind of crashed it. It was Eric Lang, who I don't know that well. He, he knows some of the other people in the group a little bit better than me, and Rob Davio, who I have since had conversations with, and he's lovely, and um, we had Seth Jaffe, who I, I would consider a friend. I've known him for a little while because he has some family up here near Seattle, so we interact, and it was just this really cool, like, spur-of-the-moment periscope, and Lance was there, and Maddie Christensen, and Ross Thompson, and Josh Givens, and I'm probably forgetting people, but it was just such a, like, a crazy night. Um, I had a blast at BGG. I played fewer games than I normally do, but I did get to play the Homesteaders expansion that they're working on. So they're going to put Homesteaders all the way up to five players, and the expansion pieces like gave you different buildings, and it also gave you little events that would happen every round. So that was really cool and wonderful, and I'm really excited about that. Um, Homesteaders is a Tasty Minstrel title, like one of their very first titles, and I owned it for a very long time. I actually traded away my copy because it wasn't getting played. My playgroup didn't like it before. So when they do the deluxified version, I will be first in line to back that Kickstarter. I'm still waiting on a crap ton of Kickstarters to arrive this this month. Um, Ave Roma is like the top of my list because I learned the rules, and now I want to play a full game. But I did, the last couple days, I've been getting a couple of uh, games coming in. So I have uh, Railroad Revolution, Tramways, Not Alone, tons and tons and tons of games to play. Um, Oracle of Delphi, I picked up a review copy. Taster Minstrel actually gifted me a review copy of that. And Ars Alchemia, which is a light worker placement game. And I'm super excited to learn that. And so I need to get some plays in so I can do an actual review. Um, the guy that does Stratos, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that from like June or July, has asked me to actually put my review online of his game. We'll see. I, I don't want to replay it. It's not something that, they, they said that if they did second edition rules I could replay it, but they're not playing, planning on that right now, so I might have a, a review of Stratos coming out. It will not be super favorable because I think that they didn't really do their homework on how to make a game balanced, but they said that it'll, it's what they wanted, and they sent me a review copy, so I'm kind of going back and forth on that right now. And then the two big card games, there's Honshu and Capital Lux. Honshu is like the darling right now. Renegade picked it up, it's going to be, it's beautiful, and it's really fun, and the four player works just as well as the two player. They're a little different, they have a slightly different mechanism depending on your number of players, but it's just a really fun game, and it uses the patchworky kind of um, patch history had kind of a, a blanketing effect on their cards and Honshu is the first time I've really like seen that done in a game I love. And then Capital Lux is just a really smart card game. You put cards in front of yourself or you put them in the middle. You want to have the most value in front of yourself, but if that value is ever higher than the amount in the middle, then you don't get to score them at all and you actually have to discard them. Every time you put cards in the middle, you also get those uh, values. You get, like, the cards will activate. Super smart, super fun, really easy to teach, really easy to play. Um, I played it probably, I think it was 12 times last month, though. So I played it a little, a little too much because um, you start seeing patterns of the way people play. Uh, a friend of mine, I, was observing our game of it one night at, like, this impromptu pizza party from Tiffany Ralph. BGG Con, um, she was observing and she saw us playing and she said that when she had taught it, people were not playing cards in front of themselves, so worried about getting their cards discarded and being very, very careful that all the cards went in the middle. I've yet to play a game where people did that, so I don't know what the difference is between the people that she was teaching and the people I was teaching, but I have found that every game, the pink cards are going to be played in a very similar manner no matter what is happening outside of that. Everything else in the game is absolutely amazing, and I love it, love it, love it. Even the weird, like, square gold pieces. Capital Lux is so fabulous. Um, I also, during BGG Con, kind of uh, cemented my, my opinion about Broom Service, the card game. So they made Witch's Brew, 
They made Broom Service, the board game, and now they've made Broom Service, the card game, which is the card game version of the board game. I gotta say, I gotta, I love it way more than the other two. I wasn't completely sold after my first play because I thought, okay, this is not gonna hold up. It's not gonna get more interesting. However, I think they took all of the best parts about the board game and they put them in the card game. It's just a con concentrated, beautiful, like brought down version of the board game. And the board game had these graphic design issues I did not care for. The towers were kind of murky and which which terrain is this tower in and did I already deliver to that one? And I had trouble. I had a lot of questions and stuff every time I played that game. So I was really excited playing the card game. It's the best part. It's just deciding whether or not people are going to play the cards you're playing. So it's Glass Road, the card game. It's Broom Service, the card game. It's just a really well done use of that mechanism. And I thought it was so much fun. I'm so, so, so glad about it. And it took me a few more plays to really decide that I liked it better than the board game. Um, and if you have followed me on Twitter or Instagram at all, you know that I have a slight obsession with role player. Role player is a two to four player board game. It's a, like a lightweight, medium weight dice drafting game with an action selection mechanism. You roll a character. So I was a human monk, I was a sentinel with a lost soul, <laughs> or a frogkin barbarian. You know, they they all have a designated class and backstory, and um, you are drafting dice and trying to build your character as best you can. It's just a really well done action selection game and it's fun and different and the luck is mitigated but still present. So it doesn't feel that bad when you don't get a good roll or a bad roll because it, it's not devastating. The whole game has a lot of that luck in it. Um, I will say your beginning like seven dice or so that you roll, it's like six, seven or eight depending on player count. That luck doesn't feel as balanced. It, that is kind of a kicker if someone gets like all ones and twos and you get all fives and sixes, but especially if someone gets just like threes. Because there are cards that if you had ones and twos that can be beneficial and if you have five or sixes, definitely beneficial. But in that three to four range, it's just murky and awful. And so I've seen a little bit of that get, get under people's skin. Um, there will be a Kickstarter coming out in the next couple months for the expansion to that. I want, like, versions of it. I want, like, RPG licenses over it. I think it would be so much fun to roll in your favorite system. Um, but I know that the base game sold out really fast, so he's trying really hard to get it back into stock as soon as possible. And this is a guy named Keith, who apparently a lot of my friends know, and he's part of the community. I just haven't met him yet, so I'm excited to get to know him a little bit. Um, I mentioned Rob Davia before. Um, he had crashed our Periscope Games on the Rocks over at BGG Con. Rob Davio is a game designer, long-time game designer. He worked for Hasbro for very many years. A couple of years back, he made Risk Legacy. And as soon as that kind of came out, he became Legacy Guy. And so <laughs> he did, um, he helped with Pandemic Legacy, and he had his own Legacy game called Seafall. Since that point, he's also taken some of those ideas with a, his friend Justin and built a really cool game company called Restoration Games. So they plan on taking really famous older licenses and revamping the mechanisms in them to make them new and fresh. So Restoration Games has released their first three games that they're working on. One is a remake of the game Dragon Master, which is an old, old kind of trick-taking game. They're making it um, indulgence, so like indulgences you pay to the church. Um, new graphic design, new art, new everything, but big, beautiful art cards. Um, that's pretty exciting. Um, the next one they're doing is Stop Thief, which was apparently a bunch of people's like childhood obsession game that had like a physical phone and was a thing and you had like little guys that moved around the board so of course being the modern era the new stop thief is all going to be on the app and it's going to be uh beautifully done um and you're just going to move guys around and then check against where they are and stuff on the app i think that's such a cool idea i didn't play a lot of board games when i was little but as I get deeper and deeper in this hobby, I realize I played some games that other people played. So we have this like 
cool connection already. Like, I played uh, 13, 13 Dead End Drive, I think it was called. It was kind of like Clue, but there was like this big physical thing and people dropped down below and it was really neat. And I, a couple years ago they remade it and it wasn't as good. Um, I played a game called Lie Detector, which was a physical box that you put like a slotted card into with a stylus and you were questioning suspects and you could tell when they were lying or telling the truth with this physical stylus thing. It was really neat. I played a lot of Mal Madness. I played Payday. I, I don't know. I, I played a lot of little games, but we just didn't, we didn't have a huge treasure trove or anything at home. We had Pit and we had a deck of cards because deck of cards will get you for a long time <laughs> get you going. Um, I have since played a fair amount of games, and I'm really excited to see, like, every game deserves a second chance, I think, is their, like, or their tagline for their company, and I actually agree with that, because as you learn, as a technology gets bigger, as people learn more about game design and player interactions and stuff, you can go back and take these really good ideas that people had, and maybe build into them some of the ideas that we figured out roll and move just doesn't work in most cases and some kinds of randomness don't work in most cases so they're gonna take those elements and make them more satisfying for people who like games I'm pretty excited about this as you can tell with my rant but um, Rob and I had a pretty good long conversation about gaming and the gaming life and how restoration was built and all that and it was really fun I just lucked out he came to Seattle and we had a dinner together um, other than that, I, <laughs> I'll try and keep this under 30 minutes today, but um, the other games I got to play during the marathon, we played a lot of games, and we played um, Mask of Anubis, which is kind of a VR using game with like a, a thing that you put on, and you're trying to describe where you are to people, and they're trying to build the tiles out to how you described it, and that one's a really cool one. I'm thinking I might auction that off for charity, and... Um, very soon, our copy of Santorini from Roxley Games will be arriving in Seattle. We put together like 30 people to do a group buy because if you got 20 copies of the base game, you got like a deluxified fancy version. We agreed as a group that the deluxified fancy version should go to like the Tom Basil Memorial or the Jack Basil Memorial Fund or something similar. So we're actually going to put that onto his auction or ask Tom about like how best to use that to get some money for charity. I thought that was really cool and it was kind of it once again gamer is doing good in the community. It just like melts my heart. I can't help it. It's always so good. I love it. Um Anything else that I absolutely loved. I played Navigador for the first time during BGG Con, which is like an old Matt Gertz game. Um, it's really solid. Rondells are just so fun, and it is kind of a race. You're like moving through different parts, and every time you land, you get stuff. And I couldn't get... The amount of stuff I got was like so small compared to the amount that my friend Chris got. Like, it was just so not fair. But with more players, that would be way more mitigated. The two-player did work, though. Um, and last but not least, I won't, I won't talk about everything I played, but I did get to play a two-player game that's played in hand, which you know I'm gonna love, because Oddball Aeronauts is like one of my all-time favorite games. I played Level 99 Dragon Punch. Uh, so this is another Brit who made a game that you play in a queue, <laughs> or in lines. And so both players have their cards, and you, there's different variants and stuff, but the most fun variant is that as soon as someone's selected, like, they, they close the fanning of their cards down, they, like, kind of, uh, put them into one, and then they call out one, two, three, and the other person, you know, grabs a card, and you both show it at the same time, and it's an attack of some sort, and you can counter the attacks, you can use special powers, but every time you get damage through, that means that somebody flips their cards over to the red side versus the white side. The red side abilities are better than the white side abilities for the most part, but if you run out of white side cards, you've lost the game. And some of the things will make you discard the cards to the back like Oddball Aeronauts, and if you run out of those cards, that you, you lose the game. And some things will re-switch the cards or get your cards back, and it's just like a really cool, fun duel, and I thought that was so neat. I keep wanting to see more of these two-player cards and like card games played in hand. 
which reminds me that Jonathan Gilmore was at PGGCon. I didn't get to talk to him. I did not get to play uh, Heroes and Tricks, which is a game that's played in a, like a deck box type thing, and you play it in hand. I dying to play it. I'm so excited for that one to come out because I really, really, really want to try it. Um, I think that's all I should probably talk about for now. I don't know. I don't even get to A Feast for Odin, which is fun and engaging and really, really cool and got a little aura and labora in it and you level up your resources and it's easier to learn the Caverna and I'm excited about it, but I will wait and talk about that more after I've played it a couple more times because I only got one play in. Um, that's all for me for now. I hope y'all are doing okay. If you have any fun gaming stories, please leave them below, and I will see you next time. Bye!